Okay, everyone, hello. Uh, sorry this video is being posted so late today. It's not my intention normally on an e-learning day to post this late. I uh, probably don't even think I'm posting at all today. I wanna blame you. I had some technical issues this morning that slowed me down. Okay, but anyway, here we go. Uh, National Line exam is over. Um, I wanna thank you guys big time for, for doing that. That involved some uh, just effort on y'all's part. So good job on those. I looked them over a little bit. I, I might look at them like uh, more intensely to, to kind of see exactly how y'all did. Um, Cause I get, I never thought of that. Like I could grade it basically. Um, I will warn you guys, the P, the NLE people, if they don't like the way that I went about administering this test due to our surprise quarantine, I guess worst case scenario is that like they wouldn't, give us the scores. I had to transfer y'all scores over to Scantrons since I was letting y'all take them at home. So it wasn't like ideal. I guess I probably could have figured out something else, but it seemed complicated and it was all last minute. So yeah, Corona had to go and kind of mess up our NLE a little bit, but it might be fine. It might be totally fine. I'm not totally sure. You're not supposed to take it at home, obviously, but mm, you know. Um, and if y'all join Junior Classical League, and maybe even just come to one monthly uh, club meeting next year to be like officers, because y'all would have authority over everyone. Maybe you won't forget any Latin, and y'all can just take this again real easy, like next spring, uh, since it is just an hour. You won't have me for Latin class, but you could just like stay after school just for one hour and take it again, and maybe do even better. Um, but anyway, so just because you're not taking Latin next year, doesn't mean that you're like done with Latin. This is your last chance to take the NLE. Um, Cause yeah, that wasn't the best circumstances. This is literally the only reason I'm mad at this quarantine. Um, I mean, there's probably, there's a couple other things timing wise. I wanted to be in, in class for the Ides of March for my younger kids, but whatever. Okay. Uh, I don't know if YouTube is always accurate, but it looks like maybe a couple of you didn't watch the video from last week. I don't blame you. I had you doing all the NLE stuff, so it's fine. But I did introduce chapter 32. So you're gonna wanna watch that video. Like th that video is almost more important than this one. I'm gonna do practice with chapter 32 right now uh, and talk about the homework this week. But um, that video is better as far as introducing the concepts of this chapter, which are not too bad, but they are, you definitely have to like, look over them and learn. It's not something you can just, you can't really wing it. Uh, but anyway, let's do a vocab quiz on Friday. Um, let's see, uh, what else was I gonna say? So when you get back from spring break, we'll have eight chapters, we basically have eight weeks, uh, give or take with, with testing. So we're gonna rush a little bit, but we are gonna finish the gosh dang textbook. It's gonna be great. So get used to hybrid quizzes where I'm doing vocab and grammar at the same time. But for this week, since it's e-learning, let's just do the vocab. Um, and do six or ten of the exercises from the textbook to check on Thursday. With my other classes, I'm streaming the homework check video, uh, but maybe I'll just make a video for you guys. But if you want to stream, let me know, I guess. Um, I can always help you guys set up a, an Among Us if you want, um, and at the same time, maybe we could check some homework. But otherwise, I'll just upload a video on Thursday. Here is the vocab for this chapter. Uh, not too bad. We got like six or seven nouns. We're learning that quiz or quid after like in these conditions, which we're gonna have a lot of conditions to chapters. What is it about? It's called the whole chapter's label is just conditions. It's nothing else. Uh, but they can be like anything or anyone or something or someone um, when they're showing up after C or Nisi, which is how our conditions start. We got two adjectives there, no three. And then they is a cool suffix that it's kind of like um, que, except it means or instead of and. We're officially getting hoe, which is like, oh no, it's a bad thing. Subito is a second repente, suddenly. And then two new verbs. So I think they're going kind of easy on us with uh, the transmit at the bottom there. Um, uh, with vocab, because uh, the concepts are, it's kind of, it's not like it's hard, but if you watch last week's video, you know it's just going to take a little while to learn all these terms because they're such wacky terms that aren't even hyphenated. Uh, so the present tense conditions are easy. Those are, those are fine. We don't have to think about those really. Keep in mind simple fact future. That's the first one we were introduced to, even though it is future tense, you probably won't actually use will in the protasis part of the condition, 
remember protasis means like the beginning part, potasis is the end part. But the subjunctive three are, you're probably gonna get mixed up. We have contrary to fact present, which employs uh, imperfect subjunctives. So look for infinitives with MST must assent. And then contrary to, uh, to fact past, which uses pluperfect. So that, like here, there's a correlation, right? Simple fact present uses present tense indicatives, but there, there's like this lack of um, cohesion here. Contrary to fact present uses imperfect subjunctive, whereas contrary to fact past uses pluperfect subjunctives. Wow, so look for the ISSA in that. Um, and as far as translating these contrary to fact present, it's gonna be, um, he was or, or they were doing this, so that he would, keyword would, you'd use would in the apotesis. Whereas contrary to fact present, you just really translate that kind of how you would normally, um, but you are adding would into the apotesis. Uh, so he or she had verbed so that they would have verbed. Um, and then future less vivid is a little weird. It's gonna be should dot 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 would, should in the protestus, would in the apotesis. Let's do the first five extra gitationes. Oh, did I change that? Yeah, yeah, okay, y'all are gonna do six or 10 since I'm gonna do one through five right now. I feel like they, they try to ease us in so like the order actually matters. So if we're doing you know, like these first, then we should do one through five first. And you guys can do six or 10 for homework. But be warned, they might be a little harder. Dumodo extraquitus opem moxferat moenia urbis calariter conservare patrimus. Okay, Dumodo, we haven't seen too much, but it means provided that. Um, opem is this new word for like resource or from ops opus. It's a new vocab word back here. There it is. Um, the second one, help or aid. It can be more like power in the plural. Extra quitus is army. Calariter is the adverb of calare, not swift, but swiftly. Okay, so it's like provided that the army. It's nominative, extra key two, extra key two tests. Third declension, right? That's not a fourth declension because then it wouldn't be nominative either. But provided that the army like bears uh, or carries aid soon, maybe just brings aid. So that's pretty straightforward. And now we have to stop and think what voice, or I'm sorry, mood and tense is fair rot. This is kind of hard. If you can remember, I should probably pull up the whole thing, but if you can remember the present indicative is just fert. For third singular, F-E-R-T, sounds kind of weird. Um, whereas uh, the imperfect subjunctive would have two R's. The future indicative would have an E-T at the end, and I believe two R's. <laughs> so this is to say, this is just subjunctive, um, which we should kind of expect given that we have Dumodo showing up. Um, yeah, 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 Dumodo. Uh, requires a subjunctive mood. So it is just subjunctive present. You don't really have to translate it weirdly. It's just, it has to be subjunctive because of the matter. Uh, provided that the army bears carries aid soon. So this is actually not, I was getting carried away with thinking like, oh, is like, is this our, um, what would it be? A future less vivid, but not really because Again, fair out, it's not, this is not a condition actually. Um, it's just subjunctive because do motor requires it. Uh, so we'll keep moving. Um, uh, yeah, so we, okay, you have a look at Dupaterinus, this is future of Boston, will be able to conserve the city walls swiftly. And yeah, so, okay. It still has the note from when, I was just expecting it so much. Um, so it's a Dumoto, or a, what we call that proviso, right? A proviso clause into a simple fact future. So there's nothing weird happening with, like we do have the, uh, an, an apotesis, but we don't have a protasis. So it's half of a condition. Also, I left off last video asking myself if we could have blended, um, uh, blended, what's it called? Um, conditions, and we can, we can. So that's why I was expecting this. We'll uh, we'll see one in a second, but and you just kind of follow the rules for how to translate them individually. Like if your protasis is one kind of condition, but your apotesis is another, just just go with it. All right. So when, since, or although for this coon, but if I'm looking ahead a little bit, we have this new word for it, beginning initio. Uh, but if I look ahead in the second part, I see a tommen. So I'm thinking nevertheless, or I'm I'm sorry, although tommen will be nevertheless, although. 
looking ahead is concilia my subject it means plans oh i see our verb is second person and cognovices is blue perfect so i'm already kind of expecting a contrary to past um contrary to fact past condition so although you knew the enemy's plans from the beginning pretty straightforward actually once you see cognovice is the second person and then this is where i'm taking some adverbs from the beginning of the next part which is, is an apotesis as well as the, the actual verb from the, the very end of it noloisti is our new nolo right to not want so that'll equate something like um and so, yeah, at this point, we're doing contrary to fact past. You know, if he had done this, if you had known, blah, 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 uh, then and we're expecting a, the, the apotheosis to also be blue perfect. So it would have been, would have. Um, but that's actually not going to work here. So just go with it. It kind of switches into just a simple fact past. Because no loisty is just perfect. So simple fact past can use imperfect or perfect. And you just kind of translate it how you would uh, normally. So Noloisti is also second person. So although you had known the enemy's plans from the beginning, you nevertheless, Tommen, did not want Noloisti at first, primo, to, and then we take some infinitives. A lot of adverbial kind of stuff going on there. Uh, at first, to, uh, our first infinitive is up there, offer any help or even uh, entrust 100 soldiers or promise 100 soldiers. So, yeah. This is a, do I say it? Yeah, simple. This is a contrary to fact past into a simple fact past. There's really only tricks for translating the, the subjunctive ones. You're, you're having to whip out wood in the um, apotheosis of the first two and should and would in the future less vivid. But otherwise, the, the indicative ones, you, you don't really need, need to know them. Uh, you would translate them properly, probably regardless of, of knowing the term or not. Okay, unless this one's kind of weird, we have this word DVTI, which means wealth. Uh, that's old, but I think we forget it sometimes. In video, we haven't seen too much, it means envy. So, if wealth and envy, where's my verb, prohibit, prohibit, that's just present so far, uh, us, Abamora et Honora, is going to continuously prohibit us from love and honor. Um, uh, sumus, are we truly vera? truly rich. Uh, I, I do not remember getting this adjective dives, divitis, which means rich or wealthy, but apparently we do. Uh, so this is just simple fact present. Nothing going on here that's really weird at all. Uh, ooh. Okay, I'm just getting right into the translation here. Whoops. So paper quidem non erit par teris nisi scientiam in guineum ve habebit si autem haec habeet. Yacht multi magnopera and videot. Okay, I'll fix that. Okay, this one's not too bad. Almost done for the video, but we do have a uh, okay. This first part is not a condition, so it's, it just, it's not super important, honestly. Uh, the port and I didn't even totally fix it. The port will certainly not be par, is this new word that means equal to, and it takes a dative equal to the rest, unless. Um, so this is weird. Pop air, it's like an adjective, but it's functioning nounishly here. So it's like the poor, or we, I guess we could say like a poor person. I mean, popper is literally an English word. Uh, that means a, like, it's like an old fashioned English word, but an impoverished person. So the poor will certainly not be equal to the rest unless he or she, uh, let's use they though. Cause even though like it's technically the noun is Singular, we don't like know the gender. It, we're just talking about the poor in general, I guess. So they, um, uh, have babe it is future tense, uh, but we don't want to say unless they will have uh, knowledge or talent. So we're that's the simple fact future, but we're not going to translate it future tensely. Future tensely is a, uh, like it's future tense because that just sounds weird in English. And this is also we're seeing that they suffix that makes that means or. So knowledge or talent. If, however, haikabeat, that is present subjunctive. So we might be doing a future less vivid. If, however, they, let's continue to use they, which I know is weird because this is third singular. But again, we don't know the gender of this, this popper. Um, uh, if, however, they 
have this, if they do have knowledge, um, if they if they should, because I'm thinking future less vivid, and you, you should and would in future less vivid, then, and then in videot is to be envious, and that is also present subject. Then uh, many, then many, the subject switches over, many um, uh, would be greatly envious in a fixed magnopera. Many would envy them greatly is probably a little better. There is no tech like them technically, but that's the idea. We're talking about the pop hair, um, the poor person that you're talking about. Okay, so this is simple fact future initially, and then after the semicolon, we have a, a protasis and a potasis in future less vivid. So you do have to know to use would and should there. I'm using would twice. Uh, uh, if, Let's see, one second. Um, should first, should first. I guess, that, however, they should have, the, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Would there is actually kind of weird, whereas here it's not. If, however, they should have this, many would envy them greatly. Okay, I guess we got through that. That was a little, a little rough, but okay. Um, last one, I think. Yeah, last one. Um, unless, this one's weird. I actually changed the case of Insidii. Just go with it. Unless they, paterent is from pateo, to open or expose. Um, so here we want to say expose. Open doesn't make sense. So unless they expose the plot, um, which I think I say plots, plural, or whatever. Um, we, so these are both imperfect subjunctive, which means contrary to fact present. And you're just going to put a would in the apostasis there. And basically, that's it. Unless they were exposing plots, we would greatly fear, or especially fear, rather, his iron. Maxima is a superlative adverb of great. Um, but instead of like, so let's see, magnopera is just the positive greatly. Uh, magus is like more greatly, very great, very great. That sounds weird. But maxima is the adverb. You, you might just go with especially or most. Uh, so we could say we would most fear, but that sounds a little like old timey, kind of like uh, uh, Ren Fair, kind of Renaissance English. Uh, especially works a little better here. All right, guys, get excited for that four hour Justice League Snyder Cut on Thursday if your parents have HBO. If not, you can get a free trial for a week. And then we, we, we get to find out if Falcon and Winter Soldier is like remotely good at all. So that's exciting. Um, okay, let me know if you have any questions on anything. I will upload a video much earlier than this tomorrow, doing a little more practice, whether it's 38 stories or if I might save that for the Monday that we get back uh, for spring break after we introduce chapter 33. But then, yeah, do that homework and submit it to me through the usual. Well, y'all can submit it however y'all want. Other classes, I like them to use the actual assignment itself, like on Teams, but since there's just five of y'all, if you message it to me, you email it, either way. All right. Uh, also, I'll be uploading. I'm a little behind on. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't apply to y'all. Y'all haven't had grades in like two weeks because of NLE. All right. I'm uploading everyone else's grades today. Goodbye. Good luck with the rest of your e-learning.